Um, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Mansfield Town News and Views. Um, and today, I'm joined with a very special guest, former Mansfield Town player, Martin Pembleton, to uh, discuss his time at the club, along with his footballing career. First off, Martin, how are you doing, mate? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Thanks for having me. Looking forward yeah. to having a chat. Yeah, let's hope we can have a long chat <laughs> time around. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, thanks anyway um, for, for, for taking your time out. I really do appreciate that. Um so yeah, you was talking about Oldham Athletic earlier where you started your footballing career and obviously yeah. back in them days, football, <laughs> a lot of different game compared to now um, and it, you learned a lot there, you were saying before. Yeah, very different. Started on the old YTS scheme, if people will remember that, if they're old enough. So, But as an apprentice then, obviously you had all the jobs, you was cleaning boots, dressing rooms, picking up <clears throat> sweaty kit, um, packing yeah. boots for, for away games, making pots of tea, all these things and... Basically, you didn't get treated very well, but ironically, it was probably one of the happiest times in football as well because you had that real camaraderie and going through a tough time. But you also you had to learn earn your respect and you had to learn respect as well, you know. So I literally yeah. went from doing my GCSEs and living at home with my mum to being in a football club, staying in digs, getting shouted at every day and having yeah. things put upon you. So it's a, it's a yeah. massive contrast. But it was brilliant because although nowadays I don't think it... it it maybe went too far in some instances. There were lots of elements of that that were really good for your grounding to, yeah. to teach you a certain way of being and give you that responsibility. So, yeah, I loved it. So, it was just like, for you then at the time, it was just like life skills like that you've just continued to take on now. Yeah, well, like you said, you're used to, you know, you're at school and you're living at home. You don't really have any responsibilities or too much to do. And, and then you end up going into a football club and you think yeah. you're just going to be playing football, but you're, you're sweeping dressing rooms, you're mopping, <laughs> keeping, putting kit out. You know, I used to say about making the pots of tea and if you used to be scared to take the pots <laughs> into the first team room because if it wasn't very good, the one the would play. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, can you just go away and make that again? <laughs> like, yeah. the, the feedback was that the pot came at your head, do you know what I mean? And it was like a few choice words and go make another one. So you had to learn very quickly yeah. how to do things well because th there wasn't no, not much room for error or it wasn't, I won't say, it's like you didn't get many chances, you had to get it right essentially. But yeah, there's elements of that which were, were brilliant, you know, because it taught you to have a higher standard in what in everything that you was doing, do you know what I mean? And I don't know if that's yeah. been lost a little bit now where maybe it's a little bit lax and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think it has, to be honest with you, because obviously you look at now football, it's got sports science, you've got all the facilities now, and back in, back, I don't mean to make you sound old, but back when you first started playing, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't have much of that, like, you know. Um, <laughs> so, you know, um, it must you must look, look at football now and you must think, wow, you, wouldn't, you wish you had that when you were playing, really. Yeah, and, and and then, but then I suppose, you know, the, the players who probably played 20, 30 years before us would probably say the same thing and the players from today will be saying the same in, in another 30 years. Yeah. You know, the pitches will be even better if they can get better and, you know, standards and things, innovation will have changed so much. So I think it's just, you, yeah, you can either look at it like that or you just go, do you know what, in our time, we, yeah. we had what we had and we were we were lucky to have what we, what we had. But yeah, for sure yeah. now... It's a different, it's a different game in it altogether. Yeah, definitely. Oh, is it? Is it? You know. Um, so, was football something that you always wanted to do? Then you always wanted to be a footballer. Yeah, mate. I think I, I said to people, I think I was about eight year old and just started playing, and, and I, I just loved it. And I, and it was one of those things. I was like, "What are you going to be when you grow up? Oh, I'm going to be a footballer." Like you just say as a kid, don't you? Like, yeah. it's, it's just going to happen, and you're just naive. You go, oh, "I'll be a footballer," and. <laughs> yeah. To understand what where it in, what it's going to entail to get there, but yeah, eight years old. I just I just say to people, it's one of them things when you you just feel free on the pitch, like you know them people all have activities where you lose yourself or you you forget everything that's going on, your worries. Yeah. And the football pitch was that you know for me for sure. And so I just loved it that much. Never was always playing morning, noon, and night school holidays. You know whatever, yeah. whatever. we'd get to school early to play. We'd play at break time, lunch time after school going for his tea, back out again, you know, so we were always just practising, but we didn't know we were practising because we just we just loved it, you know. Yeah, that's it, and I think it's the same for any young kid, really, that just likes football, you know, that's, yeah. we all say, it. I mean, I was the same, we all say that, and, you know, to be, be able to do it in the career that you had, it's it's amazing, really. Oh, I think, like you said, you set out with that, that dream of doing it, and but there's a lot of hurdles along the way, and yeah. you need some good fortune as well and, and, and things like that. So to actually yeah. 
I can't remember. I saw the stats of actually becoming a pro footballer, and it was like you don't, you don't really think of those things at the time. But something like not point one percent or something, and you go, "Wow!" Like that's so. Even if you don't play like Premier League, but you play like you said in League Two, League One Championship, you've yeah. still got yourself into a a really small percentage of people that being able to. So for that, I always think of you know. I used to kind of play it down a little bit before, but actually. Yeah, that's a, you know whatever. If you become a pro footballer, you've you've reached a really high level, haven't you? So, oh, of course, yeah. You, I mean, depending on how your career goes, you you kind of like set for life, aren't you? When you think, yeah. Well, for many Premier League, yeah, certainly yeah. nowadays. Maybe when we yeah. were playing, it was a little bit less. So you you do other yeah. you got to do other things. But I think even just that getting to go in every day to work and kick a football around yeah. with your mates and have a laugh and yeah. just. It's yeah, it's, it's brilliant, you know. It's just you, you don't. I don't think you like most things. We never fully appreciate them while we're doing them. Do it till after they've ended, and I think that's yeah, what a absolutely. lot of players kind of find out. That once it's come to an end, you, you you get what everyone was on about then, you know. Yeah, definitely. And so growing up, then, who was your greatest influence growing oh, up? In- my hero was John Barnes. <clears throat> I, yeah. I'm left footed. He's left footed. Obviously, you know, yeah. black player. He just he was exciting, one he's skillful, just the things that he used to do. And so he was yeah, he was John Barnes was my idol and, and I played when I played when I was younger, I was played on the left and, yeah. and, and tried to emulate emulate him really. So yeah, he was yeah, yeah everything was, was John Barnes, absolutely loved it. <laughs> so obviously you ended up being a fullback throughout your career then. Did, was yeah. that a position that you started out <laughs> or, or did you get moved there? Or? No, I was a I was a forward mate when when I first started at Oldham and Started out up front and yeah, I, I played in reserves and I scored a lot of goals. I, I really loved it. I think that happens with a lot of players when you <laughs> you end up getting older, you end up getting kind of fur, further back, you know. And then fullback yeah. was just something that, do you know what? It just happened, mate. It just it weren't planned at all. I never came in as a fullback or whatever. I came as an attacking player really when I I came yeah. on trial from um, Bradford Park Avenue back in two thousand when Billy Dayden was in charge and. Yeah. But it just naturally morphed into that because there's not many left sided players, are there? So you yeah, kind of, really. you've got a bit of an advantage in some respects. So yeah. just ended up in that position. And, and obviously, the team we had, it weren't like I didn't really play left back. It was me and Cords just used to play left, like Cords just laid left wing, give him the ball. He'd go yeah. past a few, he'd sit a few people down on the backside. Yeah. I'd give it him, he'd cut inside, I'd run up the line, and I'd get mm-hmm. to put loads of crosses in. So it it, it weren't really. A, it was more like left left wing, really. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so when you came to Mansfield, then what was? Uh, how did the interest came about then for the? Movie? Yeah, so I went out of the game in nineteen. Uh, I think it was October ninety eight. I was at uh, Hartlepool and I was on a month to month, and I got injured, and then I, I never got back. And kind of that was the first time I'd, I'd gone out of the game. So that was quite. Um, yeah, I won't say, I won't, not devastating, but in a way it was because obviously you've done it all your life and you, you come up around then to be out of the game. Felt yeah. a lot of shame, a lot of kind of guilt. You know, I felt like I'd let people down by coming out of the game. And I didn't um, I didn't want anything to do with football for like that first, I think that first month, I pretty yeah. much just went out every night. I didn't <laughs> watch, listen to football, just needed a complete break. And then um, there was a, one of the, it was Harrogate Town, actually. Obviously, they're in the league now. When I yeah. went to play for them, they were in the Unibond First Division, right? So wow. they just kept asking me to come down and play, and I did. And and then I stayed there for about a year, and then we played um, Bradford Park Avenue uh, in a friendly, and the manager, Trevor Stoughton, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, he he said, listen, why don't you come come to us? I think, you know, it'd be great for you, and I'll, I'll help you. And I, and I did, and I played there for a year, and then... He knew he knew Billy, and he he got me a trial uh, mm. at Mansfield in July two thousand, and I, I came down two week trial. I think we ended up going up to Inverness on trial like, <laughs> uh, on the tour. It was like eight twelve hours on a bus. It, it was a nightmare. But I actually got injured in I think first week of my tr- of my trial, so I was a little, obviously a bit concerned. Yeah, of but, course. But Billy came to me and he just said, "Listen, he said I've seen enough already. I'm going to sign you." So for me, that was like yeah. a massive relief to have got back into in uh, the interleague football you know certainly because i've been working part-time playing part-time yeah but i managed to get back in and thanks to billy he, he gave me that opportunity and then obviously played in that first season managed to play a few a few games and and then the squad kind of changed for that that following season and yeah. different faces came in and then obviously we know what happened 
what yeah. happened from there, you know. What was uh, your first impressions of Mansfield when you came to the club on trial? What did you make of it? Do you know what? I just, mate, I was just so happy to be back in football. Honestly, I was so grateful to have the, yeah. the chance. And I just, obviously, the new, the, the new stands had gone up. And I was like, this is, yeah. yeah, I just felt, it just felt somebody wanted you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, after being rejected for someone to say, yeah, I want I want you to come and play for us. Then it, yeah. it, that's why Mansfield will always have a special place in my yeah. heart because they, they gave me that opportunity to get back into to football, you know. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've got a strong affinity and love for for the Stags, mate. I, lo- I love it. Yeah, I mean that. Like I say, no, at the time, no other club wanted to like you know sign you or anything. So Mansfield was the one that gave you the gave you love, love for football back, really. Yeah, I'd kind of developed it over that time with Trevor at Bradford Park Avenue. But yeah, just like I said, just for Billy to show that faith in me mm. after only a few days of training with him to say, because I'd been on trial at other places and it's a little, you know, when you go on trial, you don't always get a fair crack of the whip yeah. or they don't really, you know, they don't look at Fair-ball, you properly. Yeah. Where, so yeah, for Billy and then for him to take time out to come and actually speak to me to put my mind at ease, that meant, you know, and again, Billy did and someone who I owe a lot to, you know, he's a, he's a brilliant, brilliant fella. Yeah, absolutely. And you look at the squad of players that he had, you know, him and Stu Mockers, the, the amount of young players, Liam Lawrence, Wayne Corden, like you mentioned there, yeah. Green Acre and that. I mean, just yeah. to play among players like that, that must have been amazing to be around players like that, especially in training as well. Well, I think, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it was kind of like that perfect storm with a lot of the lads coming through the youth, Liam, Craig Disley, Bobby Assel, Lee yeah. Williamson. And yeah. then some of the older players had left before, Lee Williams, uh, Mark Blake, you know, and then a few others had come in, hadn't they? Adam Barrett, Stuart Reddington, Les Robinson, of course, Robbo, like absolute yeah. legend. Pilt yeah. came in, you know, so yeah. we got a good mix. Cords came in as well, didn't it? And, and Tanks. Yeah. And, and, and so mm. we just had that blend of youth and a little bit of experience as well <clears throat> that then just culminated in what we what we had in that 2000-2002 that uh, one 2002 season. But the, honestly, mate, in, when pre-season, like we... We just came in and played football straight away. Like, yeah. we just was playing five-a-sides possession. You say you was usually running up hills and doing all that sort of stuff. But we, Billy just got the footballs out. And that's how we got fit over, over yeah. pre-season. We just played football. So, I think that then naturally just rolled into the season where he never told us how to play either. Do you know what I mean? He just, he just express yourself, yeah. He just trusted us. He just said, listen, just, you know how to play football. Go and do it. And so, that's why it was really freeing to, and so yeah. enjoyable in that in that season, you know. So there was like no expectation of like promotion. Nobody speaking anything about like just go and play football. We, we didn't no, We didn't think anything. We didn't, you know, we didn't think about what, how would we do. We didn't think, oh, we'll go up this year. I think we just everybody just loved to play football, and I think the standard yeah. of football we played in that division was much higher oh, than, God, than yeah. League Two. You know, the quality of football it was yeah. entertaining, and then I think we just once we got going, I think pre-season actually. Because we, we played against Sunderland and Middlesbrough and, and a few other teams, and we played really well. And I think that's when the lads started to think we've got a pretty good, we've got a pretty good team. But again, never thinking promotion. We'll just, we'll just yeah. see we go. You know. I think that's why pre season so important for every player, though, because you get to know the lads, and, and so pre season really did help the team really spur on for the rest of the season. Then a- absolutely, yeah, a lot of bonding. And again, the players that I mentioned who came in were all great characters, and the young lads that came in as well. Everybody, I don't know, it was just like I said, it's sometimes you just get a group of people who come together, and it just, just clicks. it just clicks. And you know, and I think that's <laughs> more, you know, different backgrounds. Obviously, I'd come from non-league people coming through the youth system. Robbo had come from from Oxford, Oxford legend. You know, obviously we had Chrissy Greenacre, yeah. Adam Barrett came. You know, and and just Shane Bradley. So do you know, it was just. Well, I just think it was one of them things that's just meant to meant to be, you know. You just this, it just was meant to meant to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, like I say, I think that's what it comes down to. And hopefully, we're going to be saying the same about this Mansfield team now. You know, yeah. it's, it's you know, Nigel's signed a lot of these players for us at the start of this season, so hopefully, they can you know pick up the last you know couple of results in these games. But yeah. as you know yourself, though, it's you, you've got to make sure you don't make any mistakes. You've just got to make sure you know just do the basics. I want to say. Yeah, well, especially now we've got to the business end of the season. That's when, obviously, the pressure starts to to build a little bit because, obviously, 
any mistakes now it's you, it's harder to come come back is it recover from yeah. so i know that's something we was obviously we stood over the line to a point at, <laughs> 20 years ago because i think as the season got further on it just the, the free flowing football we still had it but you still became a bit more restricted because now you've got something to lose if that makes sense you know before we just had everything to gain whereas once we were in that third spot yeah. Now you're looking over your shoulder a little bit and then that's when you start to kind of get a little bit stressed and, and, and not play the football that you, you were playing all season, you know. So hopefully the lads now, because they're, going, they're not in that position to be taken out, they're actually trying to get into that position yeah. late. It's, it's yeah. kind of, hopefully that's going to work out well for them, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hope so. Um, so what was, uh, how would you describe the first season at Mansfield? Yeah. Um, yeah, for me, just and I think, yeah, just bed, just bedding in and trying to re-establish yourself in back in league football. You know, again, what you've done, whether you've been in football before or not, you're coming in from non-league, so you, it's again, you've kind of got to show that you're worthy to be there. You're good enough, so yeah, I just yeah. wanted to establish myself and just get another contract for the for the following season. So um, that's what I tried to try to do. You know, just just have a good attitude, train hard, try and get on with the lads. Try your best when you got opportunities, and then and then go from from there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that promotion winning season. Obviously, you know you started your second season at the club. So was it just about building on what you did in the first season? Then was it just? Yeah, I, I think it was that again. You cut, you come back. Um, you you're into pre season again. I think the thing is we had a lot of competition for places as well, which helped because oh. but it wasn't like no one disliked anyone if that makes like everybody got on so even when players were playing and you might not have been you still wanted the team to do well wow. if that makes so because a lot yeah. of the were your mates as well so although you might be disappointed to not be starting yeah you still wanted everyone to do well because it, we just did have that really really special team spirit that that season so yeah came in and just i just wanted to enjoy football and just play as many games as i as i could you know there were some crazy results in that season as well. There were so many goals, you know, against us, for us. It was just a manic season, but obviously it went to the wire with Carlisle, the last home game of the season. Like, yeah. I mean, that must have been amazing to play in. You know, what was it like for you? Oh, like, yeah, because obviously it was a full house, wasn't it? And, and we yeah. knew what we had to do. We, we just needed to get a result. And then, obviously, we got that goal early doors, which settled things down. But I always remember just, like the end of the game when we were 2 nil up and you knew that you'd you'd done it and results had gone but just feeling the energy from the crowd at the side of the pitch and that that yeah. that's one of the things I, I remember most is that kind of a bit a little bit of relief as well you know that we were able to to get over the line automatically so like say was uh, what was billy saying to you then the second uh, in the second season to you, everyone was he just <laughs> same kind of thing like i said to you, just play football basically honestly that we <laughs> We didn't. We didn't have a plan other than to just go out and play the best football that we could. He literally just gave us free, <laughs> free road, like free license. He trusted yeah. us to just. He said, so when you think of like you know Chrissy Greenacre, Liam Lawrence, Lee Williamson, yeah, Cords. You don't need to tell Cords how to play football. You, like, you just you yeah. give him the ball and you just watch him. That, that's yeah. like I literally used to give Wayne Cord and the ball, and I was already excited to see what he was going to do. Yeah. before everyone else because how many times did he check back put pe it just it made yeah. people look silly right so for even for me playing i actually love playing because you got to watch the game as well playing in defense and seeing all these lads do do their do their thing you know so yeah we yeah it was literally i'd love to say there was a plan there but <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just went out to score more goals like literally than than the other other team you know yeah, absolutely. I mean, it must have been a nightmare to come, you know, when you've got Jake, uh, you know, calling against you in trading. That must be a complete nightmare, though. Well, it, it, it <laughs> is, but imagine if you can stop Wayne Corden, right? If you can train well against him and stop nullify him in training and try yeah. to, yeah. How, how, how good are you going to be and how much easier will it be against other players? Yeah, so true. That's, that's how I looked at it. So to mark Corden yeah. training or someone else it was brilliant because. There was no other winger in the league who could do what he could no. do. So for me, when I played against other people, I was like, I just used to see how quick they were. And generally, they weren't quicker than me. And then I was like, I'm all, I'm all right now because they didn't, they couldn't do what Cords could do. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. No, I bro honestly, just just to watch him play and stuff and, and those other lads who, who had those, like, that ability. It's just, yeah, brilliant. 
What would you describe your relationship like with uh, Steve Watkins? Like, what would you? Um... Yeah, Skip. No, brilliant. He, he was brilliant. Number two, you know. And then obviously he got yeah. he got the job, and he yeah. you know he helped everyone kind of get over the over the line. So yeah, I, I yeah. you know I got I I think I did anyway. I don't know. Other people might tell you different. I think I got on with everybody. Yeah, uh, and I, and I liked everyone. You know, of course, you're not always going to see eye to eye if you're playing or not playing. That's part of yeah. parcel with the manager player thing, isn't it? It can yeah. be you know strange because everybody thinks they should be playing, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. but no, honestly, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, got on with everyone. So when Billy went, then obviously was it a shock to you when you found out the news or you know? Yeah, no, we didn't know. We, it was after the Leicester game, wasn't it? We we didn't have a the FA Cup tie. We didn't have a clue. So yeah, it was a bit of a shock. But because we knew Skip uh, Stuart Watkiss, that was all right because we knew, and he wasn't going to try to change what we were doing because he'd been instrumental as, as that as number two anyway. So for us, yeah. it, it it was okay. But yeah, nobody knew uh, Billy was leaving. So yeah, that was a was a shock. And it, yeah, sad, you know, because obviously for me personally. Yeah, give you the he, chance. He's been yeah. so influential in my career, so and he, and he's a he's a uh, you know lovely bloke as well. So, so when Stuart came in, it was just more of the same lads, basically, just keep doing what you're doing, basically. That's all you know. That's all we we could do. Yeah, we're just trying to yeah. to keep producing what we we we'd produced, and and obviously yeah. you know uh, Stuart would have had a few different ideas that he put in place, but overall, I think like you said, the ethos and the ideas that we wanted to do didn't didn't change fundamentally. You know. I think that's what where some teams go wrong sometimes. Where when there's a change of manager, when you're going for promotion, it can really yeah. derail you. But for you guys, it's it helped when you had Stuart there when he worked with Billy because you, you know it was exactly how you play in that. So yeah. because some managers can come in and just completely change things. But well, yeah. Imagine imagine if we'd have got a manager who came in who completely tried to change the style of football or get the yeah. players to do things they couldn't do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It would have been catastrophic. Really, I don't think we would have got promoted. You know. Well, yeah, I mean, like I say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, I mean, absolutely, yeah. Keep it the same, same going. Um, so, who would you say was your best friends at Mansfield? That like, or was it just hard best to friends at Mansfield? Yeah. So, Chrissy Greenacre used to travel in with Chrissy. So, uh, Michael Bingham as well. Uh, yeah. Bings, uh, Alan Sankard, Pilks, Adam yeah. Barrett. I mean, these these are the lads that I obviously I still speak to now. We're all still we're in a, a WhatsApp group and everything. But like yeah. I said. Andy White, who you've had on, big Andy's class, you know, spoke to Bobby Assel, messaged him recently. Got on, re I, honestly, I, me personally, I just got on, I liked everybody. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just did, but yeah, like obviously, I used to travel in with Chrissy Greenacre a lot, so he was probably yeah. the, the one I was closest with. Well, like I say, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be interviewing Les Robinson as well from that oh, season. So I'm really looking forward to that one because yeah, he was. Solid as well, wasn't oh, it? mate, Robbo, what a great, yeah. And again, we're still on social media, we keep in contact on so our messages here and there, but yeah, really just just brilliant people, mate. Honestly, I, I've been mm. in a lot of dressing rooms over my years, but that was probably the best best dressing room I've been in. Just just these group of people who who kind of all had the same goal, but they just handled themselves in a cer certain way, you know. It's amazing because when you when pe you know players from that that time like yourself like it's like even to this day you still stay in touch and it just shows you the team bond that you have like because a lot of players obviously move on you know with their lives and stuff but obviously it's it's like you've still got that togetherness even now all these years later. Yeah, no, that's that's one of the best things about so you know in football you obviously like any work you meet a lot of people don't you? you've got acquaintances yeah. but it's very rare that you end up with a lot of friends so to get up to end up with a lot of friends from football from one team at one time from one season yeah is incredible do you know what i mean so that's yeah that just it's just the like i said it's just the quality of the people they're all good lads and some yeah. people you love to love to know so obviously in that promotion winning season like you say you didn't have any expectations that season you just went obviously played the football that you got told to play by billy and stewart um what to traits do you think a team needs for promotion like you know what you know in your experience yeah well well for us i think um obviously confidence is massive in football but i think if you've got a way of playing that everybody buys into a philosophy yeah. then you're going to get the best out of the players you know so yeah. i think the communication's key between the the manager and the player so for us with billy because we all like loved him, we would have run. He didn't have to motivate us. We would have run for a brick wall for him yeah. without him even asking us, you know. But that came from the respect of speaking and the way he treated you. So for me, it's that communication. 
it, yeah. everyone kind of took responsibility for their role but yeah there was support there as well for each other like you know we had that the belief grew through the season yeah that we actually could do this and we knew that we could match up with teams you know and and, and play against the best teams in the league which we proved um and just that then that just that consistency in there and it's that commitment yeah. and that that drive but if you're not loving what you're doing i don't care what you do in life it's very difficult to go and yeah. be successful and so that's what kind of you know we we just had those things you know we had that determination and grit to, to come back or to see games out or you know whatever so and of course you do you do need some fortune as well right but yeah, of course yeah. you know, but the same uh, look is uh preparation meets opportunity so i think you know we were ready to go so we we absolutely deserved it yeah, absolutely. And I think, like you say, mixture there with luck. I mean, obviously, I think you need a bit of luck sometimes if it like, all comes off the post, referee decisions. And yeah. I don't think, in, in that respect, I don't think football's changed too much in that respect. It's the same game, but it's just obviously things off the pitch. I think that's what's changed football a lot. Yeah, I think I wouldn't. So, from, yeah, now being a player is very different, isn't it, with the social yeah. media aspect. And, and, you know, I think especially like the top boys where, Everyone's like a paparazzi now, aren't they? You didn't yeah. they, back when we was playing. You had literally photographers following you to get a picture. Whereas yeah. now, anyone with a phone can with a, can can do that. So, I think certainly for the top players, it's very pressurised and restricting. Like they, they they've got to be really careful what they do, but then they can yeah. engage on social media. But then you're opening yourself up to you're opening yourself up to more compliments, but you're opening yeah. yourself up to more criticism as well. You know, so I I don't think I'd like to be in it today with the way the way it is you know in terms of off the pitch i think there's a lot more they've got to put up with off the pitch isn't there yeah i think so i'm just gonna ask you that how would you cope with it now football if you were still playing you know would you stay off social media completely and if you was playing or... yeah i don't i don't know I mean, I think <laughs> for a lot of them it's, it's part and parcel of your job in that engagement with people isn't it but yeah. me personally I, i'm quite a private person so i'm not sure would have if i would have engaged I, I might have done but i would have done it maybe a little bit but yeah. i just think it's extra pressure you don't need it's hard enough doing the job as it is yeah. like, without yeah. all that extra stuff that comes with it but you know some people people can handle it can't they you know definitely yeah, yeah i think it just depends on that individual i guess really. so. um so what would you say was your best individual goal at mansfield like you know what would you say in my go, my best individual. Uh, yeah, the the oh, there was a couple, the couple in that season that I loved. There was the I scored an half volley at Lincoln. We beat them four one away. That I, I enjoyed that one. Yeah. Um, but the free kick against Luton was probably the one that I, I loved because they oh, well obviously I got sent off as well. But um, <laughs> but that game just I think that was one of the best games of the season just because how where Luton were. They had yeah. a little bit of attitude, like they thought they were a little bit cocky. So I think they thought they were going to come and just just beat as easy. And I think that um, <laughs> that day we kind of we you know we we matched them and much more. So I think that that was probably the yeah one of the highlights was definitely the free kick. Yeah. Well, so was you was always on free kicks as well, with Lawrence. Was it always like a battle to see who would take the free kicks? Do you know, no, mate. I, and that one again, I don't even know if I'd taken a free kick all season, but for some reason <laughs> I just. I thought I fancy it, and I just said to to Loza, go can I? And he was like, "Yeah, go on." So, so I, I did. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, um, who would you say was the hardest opponent you faced in that season, or just in your football career that you come up against? Hardest opponent I faced that season, well, or even just in general. Even yeah, just... I'm just I'm just trying to yeah I'm trying <laughs> to have a have a think, mate. Is it... Does it? Yeah, I, I can't. Do you know what? I can't even remember these days now. Who, who, who I fought? <laughs> that was that was tough. He was, he was brilliant. I know certainly playing in the um, younger days <clears throat> when I was at Oldham. I know like we we played in like the youth cup and we played against like Gary Neville and Skull mm. and all that and Beckham. So right. <laughs> you know, I was playing up front then, so I would say Gary Neville was yeah he was good defender. He was a tough opponent. Mm. Who would you say is the best player that you played with alongside your career? Like, I know it's going to be a tough one because you mentioned obviously Wayne Cord in there, Lawrence. I saw to name a few. Like, so, yeah, best yeah. one. Uh, again, so many different different ones. You know what I mean? But I, I was lucky enough. I did get to play with Graham Sharp a few times from back in the day. So people who were older, yeah. when Sharp he was at Oldham as a player. But um, yeah, I think you know if we're going to go uh, Mansfield for certain, like just my 
because Cords was on the same side of the pitch, I think we had a great partnership. So, like I said, I think I'm, I would say Cords for me because just his natural ability and yeah, mm-hmm. just it, honestly, I used to give him the ball and I just used to stand there and watch him like and just go, what's, what's he gonna, what who's he gonna terrorise now? <laughs> so, yeah. And that was, yeah. <laughs> So when your Mansell career came to an end, then like how um, how did that come about? Then did you just get a, like an offer that you couldn't refuse? Well, or... Yeah, I mean, I had I'd signed a year, then I'd signed another year for the promotion year, <clears throat> and then just I thought you know I'd done I'd had a good, very good season, I'd established myself as one of the you know the main players in the team. Yeah, um, and then Mister Aslam maybe had a slightly different view on what he thought my worth was, so we yeah. changed. Agree to disagree, and um, yeah, obviously, then Stockport came in, Carlton Palmer, and, and, and again, from a football point of view, you know, it's still your job, and you've got to you've got to go and earn a few a few quid if you can, and, and, yeah, and cool. you know, the difference between that and Mansfield was too big a gap for me to not con- consider, because you know, I, I would have, yeah, I'd have loved to have stayed at Mansfield, but I think at know, the time, yeah, Mr. Aslam just had a different. A di- well, different uh, difference of opinion, shall we say? <laughs> I was just going to ask you that. I mean, obviously, I can't stand talking about the guy. But what was <laughs> what was your like? Just overall impression. What was it like with just you as well as the rest of the team from that time? Um, it, it was all it was all right with me. I mean, like I said, I think he's a businessman, right? So he he, he does business. Uh, yeah. And and up until the end of that season, I, I couldn't have really said anything. He, he he was good with his word. I just like I said, I think sometimes when you you look at what you might have done yourself and how you've performed, and then for, yeah. for to come with that valuation back to you is a little bit of a, a slap in the in the face in many respects, you know. So especially in over that two year period of getting back in, yeah, kind of you've shown that you can do it, and then obviously we got a promotion. So, but this is football, right? Yeah, well, I suppose you left on a high because some players can just go after you know. So, well, <laughs> what a, what a time to yeah. You know, you know, yeah. And promoted, but yeah, like I said, I'll always Mansfield will always be like you know, special to me because of the opportunity they gave me, and then the getting the promotion, you know, which not many players manage to get a promotion in the career, do they? So yeah. So um, what would your message be to the Mansfield fans then that like supported you through at that time then? Well, the the for the fans from back then, just you know, oh, yeah, yeah. You, thank you because, like I said. Um, you know, you come from non-league and people might have an idea of whether you're going to be good enough. And it was that support in the first year and certainly the second year that, yeah, just it gives you that confidence, doesn't it? You know, and I, like we yeah. talked about when the grounds were full and obviously the crowds were in, just that that extra raw that they give you, just yeah. helps, it helps you to run a bit faster, a bit further. Just yeah. it, it does, honestly, like for the fans, it really does help you like as a player when the... When, when when you know you've got ten thousand people on your side, yeah, it's a it's an amazing feeling, you know. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, is it one of them? You still keep an eye on the results now at Mansfield. Then you still, yeah. You know, I, yeah. I always have a little look at you know t- the teams that I've played for and just just check on results and obviously seeing where they are now. I've got that game in hand and there's that opportunity. So, <clears throat> and obviously earlier in the season, it, they weren't really anywhere, were they? But no. they've just gone on this this again. Not fancied, but they've gone on this run now. So I just I like the symmetry of twenty years later potentially doing the the, the same the same thing. And obviously the changes the club's gone through with the new ownership and everything that's happened now for the club, the yeah. ground, and it's just a, it's a different world to when when we were there, you know. So yeah, I mean, like I say, if you was to come back now, I think you'd see a different club anyway. Like obviously we've got the training pitch, obviously all the plans for the stand. So obviously a lot, a lot of changes, like you say. Yeah. Uh, uh, Meza's still there, though, isn't he? The ground. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on Facebook with Mez, so yeah, I know he's, he's still there. He's a good lad as well. Yeah, like I say, it's um, all the players mention Mez. Every time I speak to him, it's like, is he all right? You know, everyone mentions Mez. There, everyone. <laughs> so yeah, what was it? What was it like with the bond with the fans, the Mansfield fans? Obviously, that season, that promotion winning season. You know, because we were behind you like all for Arty, You know, so oh, on, you know, honestly, like I yeah. said, just that. You know, away from home as well, and you know, people yeah. travelled out. Then I always remember like the Leicester game and stuff, and then obviously yeah. the other games. You know, where you, you you go far away from home, and people come to watch you and stuff. Just yeah, yeah, it's amazing what they, they played a massive part in that in that winning season. You know, and we'll always be you know thankful for for that mm-hmm. part, and again for accepting me and supporting me. That's that's always something that I'll um, I'll cherish. You know. 
Who would you say was the best football manager that you played under in your football career? Uh, oh, different ones, different reasons. Joe Royal was the best manager when I was old, obviously. He, yeah. he was decent. Yeah. But as a as a person, on Bill, Billy did, and yeah, like I can't can't speak highly enough of him. Just as a as a as a bloke, and like I said, you just me personally, he never had to ask you to do anything. I would have just. I would have, I would have run through that brick wall for him, you know. Yeah. And I think, it, I think he had that. Yeah, a lot yeah. of the players loved him. Yeah. You know. So when it came to your retiring, then was it just one of them? Your body was just feeling it, or you know, what was it? What was the uh, decision there then? Yeah, 2007. <laughs> just um, I was, I went to Stockport, and then I finished at Farsley Celtic, and we, I think we'd been promoted. Uh, I think we got three promotions in four years, so we'd end up getting back up to the national league, but. Just my body was in was in bits, mate. So I just was like, ah, I think it's it's time. So yeah, um, and then it just. But when you retire, you kind of you don't know what what life's going to be like, you know. So that that's been an interesting uh, journey as well after after retiring. Yeah, so for Martin saying, obviously, obviously you've been retired now for quite a while now. You've obviously um, done a lot of things in real life uh, outside of football. And yeah. I'm right in saying you've got like a um, fitness regime thing you've got going on. I, well, I used to do, mate. But what happened then, I, I became a learning mentor for disadvantaged kids when I first retired. But then six years after, then I had a, a lot of trouble with my mental health. So okay. what I've done now is I've created something where I go and doing a lot of work around that. But, then so there's workshops talks groups i create something called the one to 11 actually funny enough which is like a, a football team sheet with the 11 things that i used to recover from where i was with my mental health which was in a really dark place at one time so that's the yeah. work that i do i do now which i'm lucky enough i found something that i love which is to speak on a stage to groups of people it's kind of like um it's like performing again, like you used to do on a footy pitch, but you just yeah. you're on your own. So yeah, I do a lot of work around that now in terms of uh, mental health and stuff, and bringing my experiences from football and after uh, yeah. to different people. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, when I look at your career, obviously you played for a lot of clubs. You obviously you know experienced a lot at that time. And so, how would you describe your football career when you look back on it? You know, what would you describe it as when you yeah, look back? I I enjoyed it. I think. You can always look back, can't you, and think, oh, I wish that would have happened. That would yeah, have happened. But I've learned over time to to, <clears throat> not, to not do that and just, you know what, it, it was what it was. I, I was really fortunate enough to say that I've been a, a professional footballer. Not many people can say that. No. Um, and <laughs> actually, it gave me so much in terms of what I do now as well. So yeah. from that perspective, yeah, I'm just, and you know, so I only look on back on it now with uh, a lot of fondness, you know, and, and kind of happiness. Yeah, I think that's the best way to look at things. And I mean, when you have, obviously, when you look at the promotions that you had in non-league, obviously, what, four promotions was it, if I'm right in saying? We got you know, a few, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, like I say, hopefully, um, hopefully Mansfield can do it this season. Like, oh, you know, that's... Yeah, fingers crossed, uh, you know, they've got every chance, haven't they? So it's really tight this year, this league, isn't it? So, but... Fingers crossed they'll, they'll they'll get over the line uh, automatically because obviously the playoffs then it's a lottery in it as we saw a couple of years. Yeah. Ago, so, well, yeah, like I say, just final point. Obviously, when it obviously for you guys, obviously it took it right to the wire the last game of the season. So you you know yourself how how tough it could be at this stage of the season. So you just need concentration, obviously confidence, and just to try and you know play the best football basically. Just yeah, it's just it's doing the fundamentals and just being brave, I would say. You've got to be brave to get on the ball and brave to keep yeah. doing what served you this season, you know. If that's the trickiest thing when you get towards the end, fear starts to come in, right? What you might lose, but I'd like to think about what might you gain, what might you win rather than what you might lose. So, so it's something like, would you go into coaching now with football or do you think it's not something that you wouldn't really be? <laughs> nah, yeah, it's not football now for me. In terms of going into it, it's not something I do in in the capacity of football. The stuff what I've developed now, I'd love to go into football around the mental health side of things because I think there's a lot to do and there's a lot I can offer in that side of things, especially with the football theme program that I've created. You know, yeah, that, that'd be something I'd love to do actually to get back involved in football capacity. 
Yeah, well, best luck to you on that, Martin. Like I say, it's great that you're doing that for people that obviously uh, struggled, especially in the last couple of years, but obviously the lockdowns and stuff, and just in, in general, really, to be fair. So, you know, wish you best of luck with that, mate. I really do. Appreciate that, my friend. And uh, yeah, yeah. thank you for having me on. No, it's been great talk, talking with you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, like I say, I was only, what, seven and seven or eight, you know, watching you play. So I don't mean to think it's made you feel all that, but, you know, I'm like, wow, this, I've never seen you play and now I'm just sat interviewing you. It's like surreal for me, so. <laughs> you know. That's all good, mate. You just killed me there. You've just, I've gone, oh, man, he was only seven. I'm like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm getting on now. That's what I've got to <laughs> realise. But you know what? Yeah. I think it was 20 years ago. It's just, it's, it, it, oh. like, it's just flown, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. When you think back now, it's twenty years, and you go, "What?" Yeah, so, great, great times, mate. I will always treasure. Um, they'll that that season will stay with me forever because it was my favorite favorite one in football. Yeah. Brilliant stuff, mate. Well, like I say, um, obviously I'm going to be interviewing a couple of your ex-teammates as well, so you know, make sure to check them out as well because yeah. obviously I'm sure I'm sure there'll be stories in there that you'll know what they're yeah, referring absolutely. to. You know, because <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to watching those, mate. Yeah, cheers. Thanks again, Martin. Appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much. My pleasure, pal. Take care. Yeah, you too, mate. Bye. Bye. Right.